Santiago asks, how sexy can I get by doing the thingy? Very. Um, you'll probably max out your sexiness by doing the thing. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Yeah. You're gonna look damn good. <laughs> is up zen dude nation episode number 14 um before we get into the episode brandon we have a few announcements mm. the first first of which a lot of people don't know how to ask questions ah oh, yeah thank you this is a very important i was like thing. which one are we going to say first so if you're watching a show right now all you have to do if you want to ask questions for the next Ask the Zen Dudes is join our four-week challenge. It's at zendufitness.com. You can be invited to join a closed Facebook group where we do accountability. You know, we get down, we post jump rope content that's not anywhere else on the internet. Get in the Facebook group. Don't just ask your questions in the comments. Get in the Facebook group. Go from there. Second thing that we want to announce. We're moving to Los Angeles. We are moving to Los Angeles. So living down that lake on pale. My people say and I know some of you are probably like, why are you announcing that you're moving to LA? Who cares? It's actually a really big deal for us and we wanna thank you guys first and foremost because, so just a real quick backstory. Mm -hmm. LA for us has been like the pinnacle of, when we started this business, we came to Medellin because it's a great place to shoot. Colombia is also just super fun. It's a beautiful country and the people and the food are amazing, but it's also a great place to shoot videos because the weather's great and the quality of life is much greater. The cost of living is a little bit cheaper. So we were able to, the idea was we're gonna start our business here and then when we wanna grow and get to that next level, we're gonna to go to a major market. We hit that goal and we are super pumped to tell you guys that we are moving to Los Angeles because of that. So I'm going back on the East Coast for a few weeks. Brandon's going back to the West Coast. And then we're going out there. And then we're going to LA. Patience and consistency is like the is the one thing you have control over that is going to eventually allow you to go where you want to go. Because what we did was just we took two years. We're like, yo, we want to go to LA. We want to like really expand this movement in the US as well. But we know we we have to build this up to a certain point to be able to do it in like a responsible way. And we waited two years. Now we're rolling. Yeah. And I think you know, this is like, also it's been, this has been a chapter. Like we've all gone through chapters in our lives. And when Brandon and I first started Zen Fitness, we came down here with a vision of wanting to build this movement. And this is like a temporary close on this chapter so we can go to the next one. And uh, so we just want to say thank you. And also guys, for anyone out there who is like, like we're total dreamers. We totally believe in all that like, you know, hippy dippy like, dreamer we're gonna to go to LA and make it kind of thing and I would encourage you actually to think that way I don't think the world has enough people just saying like you know what I'm just gonna go for it like we don't necessarily know exactly what's gonna happen Hallelujah. you know like we don't know exactly what's gonna happen when we get to LA but we're gonna do it like we're going there for the ultimate like to fulfill this dream of starting this huge movement and helping as many people as possible yeah. so dude I remember sitting on the beach with my cousins Lauren and Ellen um, in, in Venice and seeing the, uh, this is like three years ago, I think. And I remember like seeing the, the mountains or something. And I was just thinking like, that's what I really want. I was like, I want to move here and I want to start. Like, it's just crazy how like all that you, you end up like manifesting the stuff. You, that you manifest exactly what you think about yeah. and, and take action about crazy. We'll be doing some meetups on the East and West coast. Sure will. So make sure you like our Facebook page because our Facebook page is gonna have all the events. It's basically you wanna see the tour, or where we're gonna be, what dates, just go to the Facebook page. Yep, yep. Um, mm -hmm. Dude, how about these questions? It's how about me. these preguntas? You know I mean? Wolfie Dragon asks, what's up Wolfie? I like my fizzy drinks, however I do try to keep off as best as I can uh, because I think that's a big part of the reason why I have, haven't gotten rid of some of my belly. So my question is, is there any zero calorie fizzy drinks out there that are really zero calories? Go ahead. My man, um, yeah, by fizzy drink, I'm assuming you're talking about soda that has calories in it because it's not of the diet variety. So, uh, dude, I think some of the best stuff you can drink that's like no calories is seltzer water, the different flavor, you know, lemon, uh, lime, uh, maybe uh, a little bit of uh, LaCroix. Yeah, get some seltzer water, man. Soda water. We drink it a lot here, 
I know in the U.S. we're drinking a lot more because there's all different flavors. Dude, I'm so psyched. It's a great option, my dude. So psyched for Lacroix. Also, man, can I be real with you? Don't drink soda. Like, just stop drinking soda. There is soda to me is like that's the thing. It's just like sugar and fake <laughs> like in your teeth. It's there's nothing good for you about soda. It's pretty poisonous. I had a diet soda last night for the first time in a long time at the movies. You know, let me tell you though, I really enjoy every two weeks I have one giant Coke Zero. Oh dude, that's what I had. Yeah. No, 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 don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it. But after I ate, I drank the whole thing, I was like, man, I should drink the whole soda. Like yeah. I had that, it's not a good... Yeah, I don't know. You can't, you're not going to be going and jumping rope after a soda. No, you're not. No, you're not. Gerardo, what's I your do. take on? What is your take on caffeine? Some of us don't like coffee or tea, but we don't want extremes like Red Bull. I get you. Mm -hmm. Do you all use liquid water enhancers that have caffeine, or take, for example, a 200 milligram caffeine pill? Uh, if recommended, when's the best time to use it, or it depends on your own body. Thanks. No problem. Go. Ahead. Yeah. What about like a five-hour energy, maybe, or yeah. or a caffeine pill? Just a caffeine pill is fine too. If it, I think, yeah, usually they're like 200 milligrams, so just cut that in half and have like 100 milligrams, which is like the equivalent to a cup of coffee. What about maca? Maca, yeah, I just don't know anything about it. That's true. It's like a mushroom. Oh, the maca root. Yeah, maca root. Maca. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's well, supposed to act in a similar way. I, I think, dude, I took maca and I didn't get hyped at all. Cool. So I think it's one of those like things, maca. like there's a bunch of things that like people say will help with this. For example, if I take like a B12, pill, which is supposed to be like energy, I don't get more energetic. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, I feel, like I feel the same about that. Where like, like maca could improve energy, it's like, oh, am I going to feel the difference? When I drink a cup of coffee, I'm hyped. Yeah. I feel that difference. Absolutely. That is true. That and is. that never goes away. My tolerance doesn't go down. Mm -mm. Every um, day. It's one, uh, one to two good cups of coffee, I'm hyped. Jordan asks, why are peanut M&Ms so delicious? Good. Jordan, I, last night I finished an entire bag of peanut and M&M's. Not the self-serving, but the big bag. Not Okay, not that big. It's probably wow. like, oh, I think it's three servings for the bag. I did it, I put them in the freezer, I ate them, and I felt great about it because they're awesome, and then I don't do that every day. Yeah. But every couple of weeks I'll do something like that, where I'll eat a whole bag of those, and I really enjoy it, and I think there's nothing wrong with that. I also was driving home from the mountains <clears throat> yesterday and stopped and had some peanut M&M's as well. Mm. And... Uh, I think I can answer your question. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why they're so delicious. Peanuts and chocolate. Mm. Enough said. So simple. Do, do you think we can get a brand deal with them? Maybe like the... Dude, I would... Yeah, that would be great. We just have peanut M&M's all the time. Dude, it's like pre-workout <laughs> coffee and peanut M&M's. Dude, I think that's... It's a great pre-workout. Chris Howitt asks, coffee or tea? What brand and type? Why? Nice. I like those short, yeah, concise questions. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. There's going to be a dense answer to it. Nice. Can I just say something about that? Yeah, Guys, what I would recommend doing, if you wanna, if you want us to answer your question, please try and make it as concise as possible. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because when I'm editing it, I don't like to put a huge paragraph up and it's really long to read. So please, we're probably gonna answer most of the questions that are really short and to the point. Coffee, Americanos from the cafes in Colombia. Coffee, Colombian coffee. It's my favorite. It really is my favorite. That's what I gotta say. Um, I don't know why the coffee's so good down here, but it really is the best. It's so good. It's so good. And like, it's one of those things where like, if you've never had a really good Americano, you may not even know this exists. Andrew asks, do you guys get cold hands and feet during your fast? I may have asked this before. Is this a bad thing and should I avoid fasting if it continues? This is a great question. I do, I get cold hands yep. and feet sometimes, yeah. And I think it's like a completely natural thing. It's just like what happens to your, it, I think your blood just thins out a little bit, right? When you're, when you're fasting. Isn't it? Yeah, I actually don't know the exact, that does happen. Also, it's not something to worry about. Do not worry about that. My understanding was that it was like thermodynamics because when I eat a bunch of food then, I get super hot. John, how you doing? How's Hawaii? It's a great question. Where do each of you feel like you're at in your jump rope journey? Any cool milestones, challenges, and or tricks that you're working towards? Great cue, go. It's a great question. I would say I am an intermediate level jump roper. The thing is though, I don't think I'll ever become a super advanced jump roper. Like I'm not gonna learn the tricks where like I'm like doing stuff around like my flipping. foot and flipping. Like I just don't really have an interest. I really like jump rope as a fitness tool and it just makes it more fun to freestyle to be able to like do a good amount of tricks. 
Yeah. But they have to be ones that like are physical demand, physically demanding. So I would say I'm intermediate right now, and I definitely want to improve, and that's why you know I jump rope so much is obviously the fitness, but also I want to improve. So I would like to get better. Uh, just working on it day by day. Yeah, I would say I feel like intermediate, advanced, not totally advanced, but a little bit higher than intermediate, and just like. I would say, so I did learn a new trick, the one where you go bam, crossover, back to it, and you just keep going like this. So I'll show you guys that actually. That was a big milestone for me because um, I think it's gonna help me learn a lot of other tricks. But to be totally honest and to go off what Brandon said, the main reason that we started Zen Dude Fitness was to help people lose weight jumping rope and to look sexy jumping rope. So for me, that is definitely a big priority over like, if I can't do a flip with a jump rope, like there's tons of, by the way, shout out Rope Rage. There's this dude in London named Rope Rage. He's an amazing jump roper and he does a bunch, he does like a bunch of crazy stuff. I don't know if I'm ever gonna get to like that level, but I also don't think it's like necessary for what my goal is. Like my goal is to be really good at jumping rope and then just to help people look freaking shredded. He's saying. What is the most spontaneous act you have ever done in both your life and your career? Great question. Yeah, I think mine was moving to uh, Medellin, Colombia, having really no idea like what was gonna happen. I was just like, well, I'm just gonna go figure it out. Most spontaneous act I've done in my life. Definitely the most spontaneous was moving to New York City with, with 50 grand in debt and $12. Like I remember visiting my cousins and I was living in Washington DC and I took a bus to New York and like, I just like hung out with my cousins and I decided on that day that I was gonna move to New York in a month and I had no, like honestly, I, I had no money. That's another story and a fun adventure, but that was the most spontaneous thing. In my career, yeah, quitting my job, starting Zen Dude Fitness, like absolutely, because I was just like fed up with it and here we are. Daniel, nice name, bro. Daniel, dude, I love these questions. Mm. Would you rather have the power to fly or the power to be invisible? I just had this discussion with Danny the other day. Mm. Would you rather have a time machine that only goes back in time or a time machine that only goes forward in time? Oh, this one, both of these are really easy. I would much rather fly than be invisible. Yeah. Like, not even close. Yeah. And the second one, not even close. I want to go to the future, not in the past. Like, oh, I want to yeah. go to the past. Like, yeah. so I could, like, go out to dinner and like have to like shoot a shit in like a piece of cement uh thing in medieval times I yeah i don't know yeah no I'm, I'm definitely on board with brandon i would definitely rather fly and go to the future that sounds way cool dude you know what i bet that's an interesting question to ask someone to get an idea of who they are of how they view like the world and like their life yeah like if their best days are behind them or if like the future's gonna be doper it's true man we have uh, Zen Dudette, we want to shout out Corey Houlihan. She got a tattoo of Do The Thing on her shoulder in cursive, and it's awesome. Dude, I can't believe people are getting tattoos of Do The Thing on them. It's the best thing ever. I'm not going to lie, it. guys. It's awesome, and we want the whole world to have Do The Thing tattoos. Yeah. And we send gifts to everyone who gets a tattoo, of course. Uh, Theo just sent him uh, a Zen Do Fitness Do The Thing tank top. Nice. After you guys that too. Corey, nice. we gotta ask her what she wants. If she wants a jump rope, we'll send that. Yeah. We'll send, uh, yep. what do you want, Corey? Tank top, you jump name rope. it. Yeah. All right, next question, here we go. Jeremiah, how to deal with negative people who constantly criticize you? Go ahead, man. You either, one, if you can, eliminate them from your lives. I don't care like who this person is. Okay. Not kill them, not like eliminate their life. <laughs> maybe, maybe. No, maybe just kill. remove them from your life. If it's at work and you're like, my coworker is like someone I'm always gonna be around, then what you need to do is just have like an unshakable identity and knowing exactly who you are. And when you have that, like when other people say stuff, you're like, cool man, like you always have issues. And I think it will resolve itself because energy goes where energy like flows. Another, another like way of saying this is that when you're giving it energy, whatever thing that's bothering you, and maybe you're participating in the confrontation or whatever, it builds more energy and there's gonna be more shit later on. So instead, just know who you are, do you, keep your head down, and it's gonna work its way out. Dude, those people. Like honestly, <clears throat> the way I think about this is like, just change your mindset. Like I'm someone who struggled a lot with self-confidence and self-esteem when I was a kid. 
And it was tough for me sometimes to recognize like, like I, fe- I felt it was the negative people's fault instead of my own. Mm-hmm. But honestly, man, like I believe you are what your thoughts are. And I basically a couple years ago started telling myself that like, I just don't give a shit what people think. And if someone's negative, I just don't care. And like, I literally tell myself that all the time. Whenever we see a negative comment on YouTube, I now see negative comments and I laugh. I, I like, like them. Um, so my, my, my suggestion to you, dude, would be like, start to just tell yourself every day that you don't care what these people think. And eventually you're not, you're not going to care. Leaf, dude, I like your name, bro. It's like Keith, but with Leaf. Now. Leaf. Are you both still practicing intermittent fasting? If not, have you noticed any changes, positive or negative? And would you like to return the IF in the future? Cheers. Dude, Leaf, we didn't, we didn't quit intermittent yeah, fasting. We're still doing thing. We are fasted right now. It's 12.26 in the PM. Sure are. Drink some coffee. No, we're still fasting, and I don't fast probably like one day a week just because maybe I want to eat breakfast. I had breakfast it's yesterday. Cheap. I had breakfast yesterday. Yep. It's so. Sunday. It is Sunday. I think I do that on Sunday actually a lot. So mm-hmm. Sundays are like our non fast a day. It's true. But there's no rules around here. It doesn't have to be a certain day. Raphael, where is the most weirdest fun place you guys have done the thing? Go ahead. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, hmm. What kind of thing are we talking about? Yeah, we're talking about <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Baha. Baha. We're talking about jump rope. Uh, in the volcano. In a volcano. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and have to agree with Brandon. Dude, I will never forget that day. If you guys have not yet, we made this series when we were in Hawaii called the Jump Rope Field Trips, and mm-hmm. we jump rope in a in a volcano, dude. That was like, we we like poked lava. That mm-hmm. was a fun day. That was a great day. That was so fun. We had some epic adventures on the island on the Big Island of Hawaii, dude. With Hawaii. jump ropes, Hawaii is such a great place, dude. I'm psyched to go back. Nalakai, Nalakai, the hizo. We're going to be camp counselors at this camp in Hawaii again this year. Shout out Bubs, our homie on Hawaii who hooked Shout it out. Shout out, how's your boy? How's your boy? One time. Ignacio. I love that name. How to prevent shin splints or tibial stress because of the workout. Probably not bending the knees enough. Brandon, what do we say? Well, these? I say two things. Uh, number one, go watch the jump rope prevent injury video. Number two, to make sure you are jumping rope correctly, go watch the seven day beginner jump rope series. Yep. Mm-hmm. Gurjeet, does sex or masturbation affect weight loss or weight gains? Hmm. We talked about this last week. Yeah, kind of. If you're having six hours straight of sex, you're probably going to burn more weight. Yeah. Other than that, I don't really see uh, how it affects your weight. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like you can definitely have like you know sex if you're like standing up and your and your legs are bent and you're like really putting work in uh yeah um then you could like, lose you need some to be picking women up and putting them up against yes. the wall squat them and just squat down and yeah. just you know <laughs> and maybe, just what are you about to say bro i love being touched i do too my love language is touch number one we have the same love languages we love language is touch number one number two a words of affirmation yep Yep, yep, yep. Touch me and tell me you like it. Dude. Theus asks, what does a beginner like me do to build the mental toughness y'all have? Thanks for both being so inspiring. Cheers. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. Uh, dude, you just really, I think mental toughness is something that you really use in the beginning when like you're building a habit. And then once you have a habit, it it feels like routine. So it's not like, it's not pain for you anymore to go do yeah. the thing. Like then I exercise now, not because of our like, mental toughness necessarily and most days it's just like True. it's part of the routine um the only time it really is painful when you get out of the routine and you get out of this habit so man you just have to put your head down and just literally do the thing for maybe three to six months straight and then after that it's just gonna feel like yeah. just part of your life totally agree one thing you can do uh like just one strategy you could use is taking cold showers that has been honestly Mm. like we've already developed the ability like the mental toughness like brandon said to work out all the time but taking cold showers for me is equally as uncomfortable every time i do it and i still just dive right into it and i think that is that's a super important thing so you build mental toughness by doing stuff that makes you feel really uncomfortable over and over again you should do like come up with a bunch of these. I feel like you do like cold showers every day, builds a willpower. Like every day, say you don't leave your house until you do fifty push-ups. Yeah, something like that. Because like you're not gonna want to do fifty push-ups in the morning. No chance. You're not gonna want to move. Just like force yourself to do that. Um, Ruben, dude, this next one's like 
Yeah, it's a great question. Ruben asks, how to deal with the fear of success and not falling back into unhealthy habits? Hmm. Fear of success. I think fears of success come from shit you haven't dealt with. Like you're afraid that if you get something, you're gonna lose something else. And so I think you need to figure out what that thing is that you're afraid of losing. Once you identify that, you can go into it and be like, oh, okay. That's what I'm afraid of. Like a lot of people never take action with weight loss because they are terrified of what their like spouse will think of them or like how that relationship will look if they completely transform their lives. And so you have to think about like, what are you afraid of? And then go into that, take it head on. Dude, I have a, a real serious question for you. <clears throat> Does any part of you feel that the fear of success is made up? I mean, I think you make, everyone makes it up. I, but dude, I, the reason I say this is because like, I thought about this and I was gonna answer this differently, but then I remembered like, I don't fear success. And like, I think I've been trained to think like, oh yeah, what's your fear of success or whatever? I don't have one. Like I think my goal is to be like, blow this up as big as possible. And like, that doesn't, that really does not, maybe I'm thinking about it the wrong way, but like, I wonder if you're asking this because like, dude, what the hell's wrong with just becoming extremely successful in everything you do and like forgetting like what's what's wrong with that well like, i think the I fear of success is mislabeled everyone says the fear of success but it's really like the fear of something else that you're calling success okay because when okay. you ask anyone you're like they're, if, they're, if you're saying i'm out of fear of success i'd be like ruben what are you afraid of yeah like, no yeah and then we discover he's like well like, I feel like if I'm successful and then you'll make up some bullshit thing, I'll be like, all right, shut up, Ruben. Like, tell me the truth. What are you afraid of, man? Yeah. And if we get to that deep level, and sometimes it takes like going through like meditation, you'll be like, this thing, you put a target and you're like, I'm afraid that like, I'm not actually good enough and I don't have to work. And if I go and I like start working out, I'm not gonna be able to sustain it. I'm afraid that I'm gonna quit before I actually reach my goals. Yeah. I think it's a lot, a lot, why a lot of people like, don't do what Dan and I are doing and like, create a YouTube channel and pour everything into it because they're like, well, what if I do it for a year straight and no one cares? So they're more fear, afraid that it won't work than they're afraid of success. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. I think for me, like, I hate when people say like, oh, I'm afraid of success. I'm like, no, you're afraid of failure. Yeah. It's not, like, dude, I'm not afraid of success at all. Like, mm. I'm, I'll be honest with you, bro, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready for more success. Oh, yeah. Like, I love that. So, thank, thank you for the explanation, dude, that's good. That's good. Darius asks, what are the benefits of heavy bag training? I would say the biggest benefit is that you burn a ton of body fat. So jump rope is like, we've seen it's the number one way, the most efficient way to burn body fat. But I think that's because like no one has like looked at what heavy bag training does to you period because nothing gets me more exhausted than just punching a bag for like three minutes straight. Like I just, my body like dies, like I'm wheezing versus jump rope, I can go like forever. So I would say if you wanna take your endurance to a whole new level, like that's where heavy bag training comes in. Absolutely, man. Am Absolutely. Barry asks, I'm 5'8", 144 pounds. I still have some fat I wanna lose, but I wanna to get to 150 with adding more muscle. Should I eat maintenance calories or calories to drop weight since I want to burn more fat? Barry, I can answer this question better um, because Barry takes a lot of pictures, so I know what Barry looks like. So it just if you're gonna ask us questions about your own body, please don't be afraid to post pictures because when we answer these questions, we'll have a frame of reference of like, oh, they're this body type or this, mm -hmm. so yeah. Um, my dude, if I was you, I would get as lean as you wanna get because that's gonna be like the fastest fitness goal you can achieve. You seem to have two goals here, you wanna get leaner and then you wanna gain more muscle. So I would get as lean as you wanna get see if maybe you're happy there you know it's not about the weight the weight honestly doesn't mean anything right you don't want to you don't really want that weight what you want is your body to look a certain way so you might look that way if you lose a little more body fat you might be like oh i guess like i'm good here and if you want more mass you can get as lean as you need to get and then you can start to incorporate our gaining muscle course i agree i think you should always get lean first because i love it when people get i think getting a this is going to sound kind of shallow but it's very true the act of getting a six pack, like the act mm. of lowering your body fat percentage to where you get a six pack mentally does something to you. Like, yeah, you can have like veiny arms and shit, but like the guys who get a six pack, I've noticed from my own experience and from many other guys, that is like 
the pinnacle of like, if I can get a six pack, then I can do anything. And so I would recommend Barry, get lean, lose the fat, get a six pack, and then and then start eating in a caloric surplus to build, build mass from there. Mom, if you couldn't jump rope, what would you do instead? I would kill myself. I'd do boxing. I would just dance. We'll just dance. What's up, Zen dudes and dudettes? I just want to know if you guys enjoy festival going like Coachella or Lollapalooza or Tomorrowland or those kind of events. I really love going and the day after I feel like I should have died from the amount of jumping I did. So true. So just want to know if you guys are festival goers. Are you implying that we take ecstasy? Is that what this is? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we love any place that has lots of music and dancing for Dude. sure. Oh, of course. Um, love festivals. Haven't been to any of the ones that you specifically mentioned in your question, but would love to go. And I encourage everyone to go to as many music festivals as possible because you just love, it's moving your body, it's all good stuff. We're definitely gonna make a Zen Dudes Do Coachella uh, video for sure next year. Um, also, man, like, dude, I remember, yo, you're so right. Go to, if you wanna like lose a ton of weight, bro, I remember going to Electric Zoo in New York City. I swear to God, I lost 15 pounds of water weight. Like I danced for 10 hours in the summer, just like moving my body like a madman. I know. I also know not everyone is like a maniac like I am, but everyone, like most people around me were yeah, sweating. They're moving. Yeah. Kabir asks, Marvel or DC? That's tough. I don't have a preference. I'm a, uh, I'm DC. I'm a DC comic guy because Batman's my favorite dude. So. Ah, DC is Batman. Yeah. We rolling, we rolling, we rolling, we rolling, we rolling, we rolling. Jamie asks, how do you guys find a place and a balance between work and the business? I find myself always running out of time in the day. Any Zen dude tips would be much appreciated. Go. That was the first time I ever saw that question. Yeah, I think we should make a regular uh, habit of that. I agree. All right, Jamie, two part answer to your question, man. First part being, um, <clears throat> life happens in cycles, right? There's cycles of going super hard, balls to the wall, giving it everything you have, and just like letting your life go out of balance and letting everything else just go to the wayside for a while. This is just how life works. If you want to do anything like really special in one specific area, so I would say just accept that. And if you're going hard, go hard. But like a thing like moving your body is a habit. So that should just be embedded within whatever going hard at business is. Beyond that, if we're talking about like social life and stuff like that, um, yeah, it comes to cycles. Like we've been going super hard and Dan is about to leave tomorrow. <clears throat> and like there's gonna be a lot less businessy stuff we're doing. It's gonna be more like yeah. us working on ourselves, making videos, like chilling, like fantasize about what we, what we want to do coming up and move to LA. Um, and the second part answer is I want you to think about, you know, how you're spending your time because Dan and I don't mind going super hard and getting a plea out of balance because our job or our work is like also our hobby. And so like it feels good either way, you know? And so that I would just ask you like, how are you spending your time? And do you want to spend your time that way for the next like 20 years? Just like think about that. Super true. I would also say, um, like, and I also realize like Brandon and I are definitely lucky. Like, I don't think like my advice wouldn't be like, well, do, just do something that you love. That's your life. Like we yeah. started Zen Dude Fitness and we got lucky that like, we basically just, we don't honestly, man, like I don't, my answer to this is like, I don't necessarily need a balance because it's all the same. Like I went, I went with my girlfriend to uh, a weekend trip to the mountains, but I was taking photos and videos the entire time because like that's what makes me happy. So this business, I don't, you know, of course we have times where we're not doing something or we take breaks, but like, you know, part of me wants to tell you like, find something to do that you don't feel like there's any, there's a balance that you have to make. Like I don't feel like I need to separate my mind from like, man, it's been a tough day at work. I need to come home and like change my mindset for the people I'm spending time with. It's just like one continuous thing that doesn't make everyone happy. That's what makes me happy. I like I like every day to be this big, long, continuous like adventure. Also, just if you can't do that though, like Jamie, I know you run an Amazon business, so you have to be very like into analytics and like run like very operationally mind like mindset. Um, and honestly, man, I know this isn't the, 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 like, you probably want something more than this answer, 
But I practice. You have to practice setting rules with yourself. Like when you come home, you're not gonna do anything on your computer for two, three hours. Like you're gonna spend time with your family or whatever and that's it. You're gonna spend time working on your health and that's it. It can't be this thing like, ah, oh, work was really stressful, I had to go work. It's like, no, dude, at a certain time, cut it off. You have to go do the things like, you have to force yourself to find a balance. Yeah, I think sometimes we feel like, we go through it too where you feel like, oh, if I don't do this thing for my work or my job, like something bad's gonna happen, but like nothing bad happens. Like usually, almost always, when we like take a few days off from the business, like we come back refreshed with new ideas, the guess where we're trying to go faster, and we just feel better. For sure. Yeah, you gotta remember, dude, this is your life. Like you don't, don't, don't throw away your life. Don't, don't think about like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to do more stuff with my family and what, whatever later, don't do that. Samson asks, do you have, have to cycle calories if you do a refeed or cheat day, i.e. eating fewer calories the day after a refeed? Yeah, so we've talked about this a little bit uh, in past weeks, but we just say like, if you're gonna do that like cycle, where you're gonna really overeat a lot on one day, just make sure you're in a deficit six days a week and then eat 150% of like your normal calories. Yeah for that day that you're going to like do a refeed on. Us personally, we don't do it as technical as that. Like I kind of just like seesaw a little bit, like on a day-to-day -day basis. Like if one day I know I eat a little bit too much, like the next day I'll go a little bit more of a calorie deficit. And usually I'm just kind of in maintenance from day to day. And that's kind of, I just have an intu intuitive balance going on within my body. Sunday's usually always the day where I overconsume. And for example, like this is my routine. On Mondays, like today, I'm totally, I'm probably gonna fast until like 6 p.m. Like my only meal is gonna be like 1500 calories. So yes, the day after I eat a big over my calories and do a refeed day, the next Monday I usually always fast the entire day and eat like 1500 calories, maybe 2000. And then I go back into my normal calorie deficit of around 2500 to 2700 calories. Um, so hope that answers y'all question. Santiago asks, how sexy can I get by doing the thingy? Um, very sexy. Very. Um, you'll probably max out your sexiness by doing the thing. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Yeah. You're gonna look damn good. You're yeah. gonna look good. Dylan, my man. See you in Boston, bro. I'm 23 and all of my friends live at the bar, love them, but it's tough when I'm not a bar scene guy and live a completely different lifestyle, social life struggles, haha, <laughs> any advice? Thanks guys, no problem. Dylan, I was the same dude at 23 years old, man, for sure. Like, exactly. my whole my whole circle, like, wanted to go do that. And, you know, I was a dude who sometimes just wanted to stay in and uh, read a book. But, yo, man, it, I think at, like, that age, you're still in this, like, uh, bubble of, I mean, and this goes on forever, but just to a lesser extent, where, like, people are constantly comparing themselves with what people around them are doing. Super true. And you're like, all right, how often is my friend going out, like, Okay, they're going to the bar three times a week. Well, you know, I'm going to feel bad about myself or guilty if I don't go three times a week. I'm going to go at least twice a week. You know, that game kind of ends a little bit as you get older. And in general, man, I think you should just focus more on like, what do you want to do? How do you want to spend your time? Yeah. Because you, there's going to be people who are kicking and doing whatever you want to do. So just find those people. Yeah, I don't mean to sound like I don't like acquiring new friends. I love having new friends, but like, I'll be honest. One thing, man, is find a hobby that you're just totally obsessed with. Like, man, I feel like I haven't made as many friends because I'm so obsessed with like, in my free time, I'm like, well, dancing's my favorite thing and like taking photos and videos. So I like don't, when someone, I mean, dude, here in Medellin, what's really funny is like, I think a lot of people think that we're like super hermits and never do anything because we kind of don't. Like when there's like people going out, like, dude, we never go out with people. And it's, it's not because we're, we don't want to, it's because like, I just want to do this other stuff that I'm obsessed with. So my point is, man, I think your friends, um, like even if they don't approve of it or whatever, it doesn't matter because then you're filling your time with something you actually care about. Um, also, dude, you're 23, like don't beat yourself up a ton. I'm glad that you have the self-awareness to start going down this path mentally. Um, but I don't regret, like when I was 23, like I was, just moved to New York and was like partying and like going out with my friends and like, I don't regret that, you know? Like I don't regret doing that, but at the same time, I did transition out of that mindset. So my point is continue to transition out of that mindset, continue to find things you wanna do, um, but don't be so hard on yourself 
for being 23 and being like, man, why do, why do all my friends want to go to the bar? Cross rope, the jump rope we use every day. Jump rope you're going to see in all of our videos. The jump rope we recommend, 10% off in the description below. It's the best. The best. The best. Uh, of course, Athletic Greens, take their protein, their uh, green juice powder, helps boost our immune systems, keep the Zen dudes nice and healthy. Keep and, our muscles uh, being built. Yeah. So if you want to check out any of their products, those are the ones that we use. If you're like, yo, what substances does Zen dudes use? We just use three, BCAs, protein, and athletic greens, and you can get them all in the link in the description below. What's up, you guys?